Sir Isaiah Berlin 1909 was a Russian-British social and political theorist, philosopher and historian of ideas. Although averse to writing, his improvised lectures and talks were recorded and transcribed, with his spoken word being converted by his secretaries into his published essays and books. Born in Riga, Latvia, in 1909, he moved to Petrograd, Russia, at the age of six, where he witnessed the revolutions of 1917. In 1921 his family moved to the UK, and he was educated at St. Paul's School, London, and Corpus Christi College, Oxford. In 1932, at the age of 23, Berlin was elected to a prize fellowship at All Souls College, Oxford. He translated works by Ivan Turgenev from Russian into English and, during the war, worked for the British Diplomatic Service. From 1957 to 1967 he was Chichel Professor of Social and Political Theory at the University of Oxford. He was President of the Aristotelian Society from 1963 to 1964. In 1966, he played a role in founding Wolfson College, Oxford, and became its first president. Berlin was appointed a CBE in 1946, knighted in 1957, and appointed to the Order of Merit in 1971. He was president of the British Academy from 1974 to 1978. He also received the 1979 Jerusalem Prize for his writings on individual freedom. An annual Isaiah Berlin lecture is held at the Hampstead Synagogue, at Wolfson College, Oxford, at the British Academy, and in Riga. Berlin's work on liberal theory and on value pluralism, as well as his opposition to Marxism and communism, has had a lasting influence. In its obituary of the scholar, The Independent stated that Isaiah Berlin was often described, especially in his old age, by means of superlatives, the world's greatest talker, the century's most inspired reader, one of the finest minds of our time. There is no doubt that he showed in more than one direction the unexpectedly large possibilities open to us at the top end of the range of human potential. Topic. Early life. Born 6 June 1909, Berlin was the only surviving child of a wealthy Jewish family, the son of Mendel Berlin, a timber trader and philanthropist and a direct descendant of Schnorr Zalman, founder of Chabad Hasidism, and his wife Marie, née Volshonik. His family owned a timber company, one of the largest in the Baltics, as well as forests in Russia, from where the timber was floated down the Dagava River to its sawmills in Riga. As his father, who was the head of the Riga Association of Timber Merchants, worked for the company in its dealings with Western companies, he was fluent not only in Russian and German, but also French and English. His Russian-speaking mother, Marie Volshonik, was also fluent in Latvian. Isaiah Berlin spent his first six years in Riga, and later lived in Andriopol a small timber town near Pskov, effectively owned by the family business and Petrograd now St. Petersburg. In Petrograd, the family lived first on Vasilyevsky Island and then on Angliaskaya Embankment on the River Neva. On Angliaskaya Embankment, they shared their building with the other tenants being Rimsky Korsakov's daughter, as well as an assistant minister of Finnish affairs, and Princess Emeritinsky, and, with the onset of the October Revolution of 1917, the fortunes of the building's tenants were rapidly reversed, with both the Princess Emeritinsky and Rimsky Korsakov's daughter soon being made to stoke the building's stoves and sweep the yards. Berlin witnessed the February and October revolutions both from his apartment windows, and from walks in the city with his governess where he recalled the crowds of protesters marching on the Winter Palace Square. One particular childhood memory of the February Revolution, marked his lifelong opposition to violence, with Berlin saying, Well I was seven and a half and something, and then I was, did I tell you the terrible sight of the policeman being dragged, not policeman, a sharp shooter from the rooftop, being dragged away by a lynching bee. In the early parts of the revolution, the only people who remained loyal to the Tsar was the police, the pharaoh. I've never seen the term pharaoh in the histories of the Russian Revolution. They existed, and they did sniping from the rooftops or attics. I saw a man like that, a pharaoh. That's not in the books, but it is true. And they sniped at the revolutionaries from roofs or attics and things. And this man was dragged down, obviously, by a crowd, and was being obviously taken to a not very agreeable fate, and I saw this man struggling in the middle of a crowd of about twenty. T. Hat gave me a permanent horror of violence which has remained with me for the rest of my life. 
Feeling increasingly oppressed by life under Bolshevik rule where the family was identified as bourgeoisie, the family left Petrograd, on 5 October 1920, for Riga, but encounters with antisemitism and difficulties with the Latvian authorities convinced them to leave, and they moved to Britain in early 1921 Mendel in January, Isaiah and Marie at the beginning of February, when Berlin was 11. In London, the family first stayed in Surbiton where he was sent to Arundel House for preparatory school, then within the year they bought a house in Kensington, and six years later in Hampstead. Berlin's native language was Russian, and his English was virtually non-existent at first, but he reached proficiency in English within a year at around the age of 12. In addition to Russian and English, Berlin was fluent in French, German and Italian, and knew Hebrew, Latin, and Ancient Greek. Despite his fluency in English, however, in later life Berlin's Oxford English accent would sound increasingly Russian in its vowel sounds. Whenever he was described as an English philosopher, Berlin always insisted that he was not an English philosopher, but would forever be a Russian Jew. I am a Russian Jew from Riga, and all my years in England cannot change this. I love England, I have been well treated here, and I cherish many things about English life, but I am a Russian Jew, that is how I was born and that is who I will be to the end of my life. Education <inaudible> 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 After being educated at St. Paul's School London, Berlin applied to Balliol College, Oxford, but was denied admission after a chaotic interview. Berlin decided to apply again, only to a different college, Corpus Christi College, Oxford. Berlin was admitted and commenced his classics greats degree. He graduated in 1928, taking a first in his final examinations and winning the John Locke Prize for his performance in the philosophy papers, in which he outscored A.J. Eyre. He subsequently took another degree at Oxford in PPE philosophy, politics and economics, winning another first after less than a year on the course. He was appointed a tutor in philosophy at New College, Oxford, and soon afterwards was elected to a prize fellowship at All Souls College, Oxford, the first unconverted Jew to achieve this fellowship at All Souls. While still a student, he befriended Eyre with whom he was to share a lifelong amicable rivalry, Stuart Hampshire, Richard Walheim, Maurice Bora, Stephen Spender, J. L. Austin and Nicholas Nabokov. In 1940, he presented a philosophical paper on other minds to a meeting attended by Ludwig Wittgenstein at Cambridge University. Wittgenstein rejected the argument of his paper in discussion but praised Berlin for his intellectual honesty and integrity. Berlin was to remain at Oxford for the rest of his life, apart from a period working for British Information Services in New York from 1940 to 1942, and for the British embassies in Washington, D.C., and Moscow from then until 1946. Prior to this service, however, Berlin was barred from participation in the British war effort as a result of his being born in Latvia, and because his left arm had been damaged at birth. In April 1943 he wrote a confidential analysis of members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee for the Foreign Office. He described Senator Arthur Capper from Kansas as a solid, stolid, 78-year-old reactionary from the Corn Belt, who is the very voice of Midwestern, grassroot, isolationism. For his services, he was appointed a CBE in the 1946 New Year Honours. Meetings with Anna Akhmatova in Leningrad in November 1945 and January 1946 had a powerful effect on both of them, and serious repercussions for Akhmatova who immortalized the meetings in her poetry. <laughs> Personal life In 1956 Berlin married Aline Halbin, née de Gunsborg who was not only the former wife of an Oxford colleague and a former winner of the Ladies Golf Championship of France, but from an exiled half-Russian aristocratic and half-ennobled Jewish banking and petroleum family her mother was Yvonne Deutsch de la Mert, granddaughter of Henri Deutsch de la Mert based in Paris. He was elected a foreign honorary member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 1959. He was instrumental in the founding, in 1966, of a new graduate college at Oxford University, Wolfson College. The college was founded to be a centre of academic excellence which, unlike many other colleges at Oxford, would also be based on a strong egalitarian and democratic ethos. Berlin was a member of the founding council of the Rothermere American Institute at Oxford University. 
As later revealed, when he was asked to evaluate the academic credentials of Isaac Deutscher, Isaiah Berlin argued against a promotion. Because of the profoundly pro communist militancy of the candidate, Berlin died in Oxford on 5 November 1997, aged 88. He is buried there in Wolvercote Cemetery. On his death, the obituarist of the Independent wrote, He was a man of formidable intellectual power with a rare gift for understanding a wide range of human motives, hopes and fears, and a prodigiously energetic capacity for enjoyment, of life, of people in all their variety, of their ideas and idiosyncrasies, of literature, of music, of art. The front page of the New York Times concluded. His was an exuberant life crowded with joys, the joy of thought, the joy of music, the joy of good friends. The theme that runs throughout his work is his concern with liberty and the dignity of human beings. Sir Isaiah radiated well-being. Thought Lecturing and composition Berlin did not enjoy writing, and his published work including both his essays and books was produced by means of conversational dictation to a tape recorder, or through the transcription of his improvised lectures and talks from recorded tapes. The work of transcribing his spoken word often placed a strain on his secretaries. This method of dictation even extended to his letters, which were produced by speaking to a Grundig tape recorder, often while simultaneously in conversation with his friends, and then transcribed with difficulty by his secretary, who at times would inadvertently include his jokes and laughter into the transcribed text itself. The results are a darting and leaping style of thought, which literally reflected his own conversation, and the ornate grammar and punctuation which was contained in his everyday speech. Topic. Two concepts of liberty Berlin is popularly known for his essay, Two Concepts of Liberty, delivered in 1958 as his inaugural lecture as Chichel Professor of Social and Political Theory at Oxford. The essay, with its analytical approach to the definition of political concepts, reintroduced the methods of analytic philosophy to the study of political philosophy. Spurred by his background in philosophy of language, Berlin argued for a nuanced and subtle understanding of our political terminology, where what was superficially understood as a single concept could mask a plurality of different uses and therefore meanings. Berlin argued that these multiple and differing concepts, otherwise masked by rhetorical conflations, showed the plurality and incompatibility of human values, and the need for us to distinguish and trade off analytically between, rather than conflate, them if we are to avoid disguising underlying value conflicts. The two concepts are, negative freedom, or freedom from interference, which Berlin derived from the British tradition, and, positive freedom, or freedom as self-mastery, which asks not what we are free from, but what we are free to do. Berlin points out that these two different conceptions of liberty can clash with each other. Counter-enlightenment Berlin's lectures on the Enlightenment and its critics especially Giambattista Vico, Johann Gottfried Herder, Joseph de Maistre and Johann Georg Hamann, to whose views Berlin referred as the Counter-Enlightenment contributed to his advocacy of an irreducibly pluralist ethical ontology. In Three Critics of the Enlightenment, Berlin argues that Hammond was one of the first thinkers to conceive of human cognition as language, the articulation and use of symbols. Berlin saw Hammond as having recognized as the rationalist's Cartesian fallacy the notion that there are clear and distinct ideas, which can be contemplated by a kind of inner eye, without the use of language, a recognition greatly sharpened in the 20th century by Wittgenstein's private language argument. Topic. Value pluralism For Berlin, values are creations of mankind, rather than products of nature waiting to be discovered. He argued, on the basis of the epistemic and empathetic access we have to other cultures across history, that the nature of mankind is such that certain values, the importance of individual liberty, for instance, will hold true across cultures, and this is what he meant by objective pluralism. Berlin's argument was partly grounded in Wittgenstein's later theory of language, which argued that intertranslatability was supervenient on a similarity in forms of life, with the inverse implication that our epistemic access to other cultures entails an ontologically contiguous value structure. 
With his account of value pluralism, he proposed the view that moral values may be equally, or rather incommensurably, valid and yet incompatible, and may, therefore, come into conflict with one another in a way that admits of no resolution without reference to particular contexts of a decision. When values clash, it may not be that one is more important than the other, keeping a promise may conflict with the pursuit of truth, liberty may clash with social justice. Moral conflicts are an intrinsic, a removable element in human life. These collisions of values are of the essence of what they are and what we are. Quote. For Berlin, this clashing of incommensurate values within, no less than between, individuals, constitutes the tragedy of human life. Alan Brown suggests, however, that Berlin ignores the fact that values are commensurable in the extent to which they contribute to the human good. Topic. The Hedgehog and the Fox The Hedgehog and the Fox a title referring to a fragment of the ancient Greek poet Archilochus, was one of Berlin's most popular essays with the general public, reprinted in numerous editions. Of the classification that gives the essay its title, Berlin once said, I never meant it very seriously. I meant it as a kind of enjoyable intellectual game, but it was taken seriously. Berlin expands upon this idea to divide writers and thinkers into two categories, hedgehogs, who view the world through the lens of a single defining idea examples given include Plato, and foxes, who draw on a wide variety of experiences and for whom the world cannot be boiled down to a single idea examples given include William Shakespeare. Other work Berlin's lecture Historical Inevitability 1954 focused on a controversy in the philosophy of history. Given the choice, whether one believes that the lives of entire peoples and societies have been decisively influenced by exceptional individuals, or, conversely, that whatever happens occurs as a result of impersonal forces oblivious to human intentions, Berlin rejected both options and the choice itself as nonsensical. Berlin is also well known for his writings on Russian intellectual history, most of which are collected in Russian Thinkers 1978, second ed. 2008 and edited, as most of Berlin's work, by Henry Hardy in the case of this volume, jointly with Aileen Kelly. Berlin also contributed a number of essays on leading intellectuals and political figures of his time, including Winston Churchill, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and Chaim Wiseman. Eighteen of these character sketches were published together as Personal Impressions, 1980, second ed., with four additional essays, 1998, third ed., with a further ten essays, 2014. Topic. Commemoration A number of commemorative events for Isaiah Berlin are held at Oxford University, as well as scholarships given out in his name, including the Wolfson Isaiah Berlin Clarendon Scholarship, the Isaiah Berlin Visiting Professorship, and the annual Isaiah Berlin Lectures. The Berlin Quadrangle of Wolfson College, Oxford, is named after him. The Isaiah Berlin Association of Latvia was founded in 2011 to promote the ideas and values of Sir Isaiah Berlin, in particular by organising an annual Isaiah Berlin Day and lectures in his memory. At the British Academy, the Isaiah Berlin Lecture Series has been held since 2001. Many volumes from Berlin's personal library were donated to Ben Gurion University of the Negev in Beer Sheva and form part of the Iran Library Collection. The Isaiah Berlin Room, on the third floor of the library, is a replica of his study at the University of Oxford. There is also the Isaiah Berlin Society which takes place at his alma mater of St. Paul's School, London. The Society invites world-famous academics to share their research into the answers to life's great concerns and to respond to students' questions. In the last few years they have hosted, A.C. Grayling, Brad Hooker, Jonathan Dancy, John Cottingham, Tim Crane, Arif Ahmed, Hugh Meller and David Papineau. Topic. Published works Apart from earlier editions of Karl Marx and the Hedgehog and the Fox, an unfinished dialogue, all books listed from 1978 onwards are edited or, where stated, co-edited by Henry Hardy, and all but Karl Marx are compilations or transcripts of lectures, essays, and letters. Details given are of first and latest UK editions, and current US editions. Most titles are also available as e-books. 
The 11 titles marked with a plus are available in the U.S. market in revised editions from Princeton University Press, with additional material by Berlin, and except in the case of Karl Marx new forwards by contemporary authors, the fifth edition of Karl Marx is also available in the UK, plus Karl Marx, His Life and Environment, Thornton Butterworth, 1939. Fifth ed., 2013, Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-15650-7. The Age of Enlightenment, The Eighteenth Century Philosophers, New American Library, 1956. Out of print. Second edition 2017 available online only. Plus The Hedgehog and the Fox, an essay on Tolstoy's view of history, Weidenfeld and Nicholson, London, 1953. Second ed., 2014, Phoenix. ISBN 978-1-7802-2843-3, Second U.S. ed., Princeton University Press, 2013. ISBN 978-1-4008-4663-4, Four Essays on Liberty, Oxford University Press, 1969. Superseded by Liberty. Vico and Herder, Two Studies in the History of Ideas, Chateau and Windus, 1976. Superseded by Three Critics of the Enlightenment. Russian Thinkers co-edited with Aileen Kelly, Hogarth Press, 1978. Second ed., revised by Henry Hardy, Penguin, 2008. ISBN 978-0-14-144220-4. Plus Concepts and Categories, Philosophical Essays, Hogarth Press, 1978. Pimlico. ISBN 978-0-7126-6552-0, Second Ed., 2013, Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-15749-8. Plus Against the Current, Essays in the History of Ideas, Hogarth Press, 1979. Pimlico. ISBN 978-0-7126-6690-9, Second Ed., 2013, Princeton University Press. Plus Personal Impressions, Hogarth Press, 1980. Second Ed., Pimlico, 1998. ISBN 978-0-7126-6601-5, Third Ed., 2014, Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-15770-2. Plus The Crooked Timber of Humanity, Chapters in the History of Ideas, John Murray, 1990. Second ed., Pimlico, 2013. ISBN 978-1-8459-5208-2, Second ed., 2013, Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-15593-7. The Magus of the North, J. G. Hammond and the Origins of Modern Irrationalism, John Murray, 1993. Superseded by Three Critics of the Enlightenment. The Sense of Reality, Studies in Ideas and Their History, Chateau and Windus, 1996. Pimlico. ISBN 978-0-7126-7367-9. The Proper Study of Mankind, an Anthology of Essays co-edited with Roger Hauschier a one-volume selection from the whole of Berlin's work, Chateau and Windus, 1997. Second ed., Vintage, 2013. ISBN 978-0-0995-8276-2. Plus The Roots of Romanticism recorded 1965, Chateau and Windus, 1999. Pimlico. ISBN 978-0-7126-6544-5, Second Ed., 2013, Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-15620-0. Plus Three Critics of the Enlightenment, Vico, Hammond, Herder, Pimlico, 2000. Second Ed., 2013. ISBN 978-1-8459-5213-6, Second Ed., 2013, Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-15765-8. Plus The Power of Ideas, Chateau and Windus, 2000. Pimlico. ISBN 978-0-7126-6554-4, Second Ed., 2013, Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-15760-3. Plus Freedom and Its Betrayal, Six Enemies of Human Liberty recorded 1952, Chateau and Windus, 2002. 
Pimlico. ISBN 978-0-7126-6842-2, Second Ed. 2014, Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-11499-6. Liberty Revised and Expanded Edition of Four Essays on Liberty, Oxford University Press, 2002. ISBN 978-0-19-924989-3. The Soviet Mind, Russian Culture Under Communism, Brookings Institution Press, 2004. ISBN 978-0-8157-2155-0, 2nd ed., Brookings Classics, 2016. ISBN 978-0-8157-2887-0. Flourishing, Letters 1928-1946, Chateau and Windus, 2004. Pimlico. ISBN 978-0-7126-3565-3. Plus Political Ideas in the Romantic Age, Their Rise and Influence on Modern Thought, Chateau and Windus, 2006. ISBN 0-7011-7909-0. Pimlico, ISBN 978-1-84413-926-2, 2nd ed., 2014, Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-12695-1. With Beata Polonowska Sigulska Unfinished Dialogue, Prometheus, 2006. ISBN 978-1-59102-376-0. Enlightening, Letters 1946-1960 Coedited with Jennifer Holmes, Chateau and Windus, 2009. ISBN 978-0-7011-7889-5. Pimlico, ISBN 978-1-8441-3834-0. Building, Letters 1960-1975 Coedited with Mark Pottle, Chateau and Windus, 2013. ISBN 978-0-701-18576-3. Affirming, Letters 1975-1997 Coedited with Mark Pottle, Chateau and Windus, 2015. ISBN 978-1-784-74008-5. See also Gerald C. McCallum, Jr. Topic references Topic Further reading Topic Books The Book of Isaiah, Personal Impressions of Isaiah Berlin Edited by Henry Hardy, The Boydell Press, Woodbridge, 2009. John Gray. Isaiah Berlin, Princeton, Princeton University Press, 1996. ISBN 0-691-04824-X. Charles Blatberg, From Pluralist to Patriotic Politics, Putting Practice First, Oxford and New York, Oxford University Press, 2000. ISBN 0-19-829688-6. A Critique of Berlin's Value Pluralism. Blatberg has also criticized Berlin for taking politics too seriously. George Crowder, Isaiah Berlin, Liberty and Pluralism, Cambridge, Polity Press, 2004. ISBN 0 7456 2476 6. Claude Gallipo, Isaiah Berlin's Liberalism, Oxford, Clarendon Press, 1994. ISBN 0 19 827868 3. Lawrence Brockless and Richie Robertson, eds. Isaiah Berlin and the Enlightenment. Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2016. Topic tributes, obituaries, articles, and profiles. Sir Isaiah Berlin, may he rest in peace. A tribute to Isaiah Berlin and a conversation with Isaiah Berlin on the Philosopher's Zone, ABC, 6 and the 13th of June 2009. Isaiah Berlin and the History of Ideas. The Isaiah Berlin Virtual Library, Wolfson College, Oxford. A podcast interview with Henry Hardy on Berlin's pluralism. A recording of the last of Berlin's Mellon Lectures, Wolfson College, Oxford. Biographical information on Sir Isaiah Berlin. A section from the last essay written by Isaiah Berlin, The New York Review of Books, Vol. XLV, No. 8, 1998. Ned O'Gorman, My Dinners with Isaiah, The Music of a Philosopher's Life, Sir Isaiah Berlin includes related article on Isaiah Berlin's commitment to ideals of genuine understanding over intellectual mastery, Commonwell, 14 August 1998. Tribute from the Chief Rabbi at his funeral. Anecdote from Wolfson College's tribute page. Howell Williams, an English liberal stooge. Letter to Berlin from Tony Blair, 23 October 1997. 
Asif Inbari, The Spectacles of Isaiah Berlin, Azure Spring 2006. Obituary by Henry Hardy. Joshua Chernus, Isaiah Berlin, A Defense, in the Oxonian Review Joshua Chernus, Freedom and Philosophers, Review of Freedom and Its Betrayal in the Oxonian Review Isaiah Berlin, Beyond the Wit, Evan R. Goldstein. Berlin Archive and Author Page from the New York Review of Books. Bendel, Mervyn F. December 2009. On Liberty, Isaiah Berlin, John Stuart Mill and the Ends of Life. Quadrant. 53 12, 36 43. Retrieved 8 August 2011. Topic external links Website and bibliography of Isaiah Berlin's writings Full text of concepts and categories Entry on Isaiah Berlin in the International Encyclopedia of Ethics Chernus, Joshua, Hardy, Henry. Isaiah Berlin. In Zalta, Edward N. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Bibliography at Wolfson College Bragg, Melvin. War in the Twentieth Century. In Our Time, BBC Radio 4, including a discussion with Michael Ignatieff, biographer, of the ideas of Berlin, a year after the latter's death. Sir Isaiah Berlin's blue plaque on Headington House Isaiah Berlin Day in Riga Broadcasts <laughs>